Hi everyone, so finally finished going through zooming in on all the different pictures and everything to come out of Gen Con. So we get to have a look at the news for Imperial Assault. The first thing is obviously the next small expansion is going to be Jabba's Realm. So as we summarised, I think I mentioned it um, just after I did my last Imperial Assault video actually, we're expecting it to be um, a, f a small box from Return of the Jedi. So that's the pattern they've gone through. And uh, lo and behold, so let's take a look at some of the figures. So this is the two waves that um, the stuff in the box in the top figure. So uh, three new heroes, a Rancor, which um, is impressive to say the least. Uh, some Camorian guards and then um, other bits and pieces like the, um, the jet trooper over on the back there. Also looking at the, uh, the Rhodian gunslinger, it looks interesting. I will really like the fact that this woman seems to be wearing Mandalorian battle armor as well. So that's interesting. Then the wave to come with it has got Jabba the Hutt and um, Scum players have been waiting a long time for Jabba. Uh, Luke Skywalker, Jedi Knight version. And then Stormtrooper Commander on a Dubak, which looks like it might even have a separate um, option, but I'll come to that when I get to him specifically. And then some Rangers for the Rebels. Oh, uh, that's wrong one. Uh, so this is the, just the box content. I wanted to quickly go over because um, I managed to make out some of the stuff on the Rancor. So I actually made notes and everything. So you can see it's points cost at 10 points. Uh, obviously a creature brawler. It's massive. It's got reach, which is going to be good being that it's on that massive base as well. There's going to be a good area for it to cover. So I'm not expecting it to be too quick. If this comes in at speed 3, it wouldn't surprise me. Guess hopefully speed 4 will be okay. Um, but it has a surge for plus 2 damage and a surge for cleave 2. also has brutality, so it can do 2 attacks in a round. And then it's got non-sentient and then a trained. Which I'm not quite sure what that does. But it seems to interact with different things. So, uh, then we have Luke's card, but I'll go into that when I get to him. It shows some of Jabba's uh, campaign card. And then we have a Gamorian guard. All we can see for that is that it has reach and a, and a built in plus one damage. Okay, so on to Luke Skywalker. He has the uh, 12 points cost, as I discussed uh, yesterday, I think, when I did the news rundown. 12 points for 16 health, 4 speed, a white defense die, and a melee attack with blue, green, yellow. He has plus 1 damage built in, plus 1 surge cancel built in. He has a surge for plus 2 damage, and a surge for PS3. Um, it also has two abilities, first one being Deflect, and that one is after an attack uh, targeting you, you or an adjacent model resolves, um, a figure of your choosing within your line of sight suffers one damage, so Luke gets his lightsaber in the way, sends some of blaster bolts flying back at them. And then there's a second ability which begins with M, but I can't quite make out some of a bold type. I struggle to make out when I zoom in, but it looks to be that once during his activation he can perform an attack without spending an action. So I was a little bit worried when I saw that he had a speed of 4, but if, that, if I've translated that ability correctly, um, he effectively gets his attack for free each round, so he can run around 8 squares, so I do his saber strike and then move back. So that's going to be really interesting to deal with. Especially when you consider that this ability isn't an action 
ability or anything like that so um, it just seems to happen it works really good uh, with p potential for all the different movement shenanigans you can get with the force users and everything there uh, it's, it's a, force user, a force user guardian leader as well and then it has a command card for um, positional advantage I think it is and that was uh, used when attacking to apply plus one attack uh, there was a parry card which I can't remember what it does now uh, is it gone uh, let's find that quickly yeah uh, use while defending to apply a plus one block to a defense result. So, a nice easy one. Then there's a face down card, which would probably be his new command card. Yeah, then we have the Alliance Rangers. So these are more troopers and also have the hunter trait and you can do some really interesting decks with trooper hunter combos so that's good. Um, plus one accuracy um, all the time. So we have a minimum range of five. Uh, they have surge for plus two, surge for plus two accuracy and a surge for PS1. Nine points for three figures, five health and speed of four. Uh, that is a good, good package. If you look at uh, the Elite Stormtroopers, they have 5 health, speed 4, um, for 9 points as well. So that's all good. But then the range on these guys, with that built-in accuracy, you can attack from a much safer distance than the Stormtroopers can. They also have Gorilla, so after you resolve an attack, if a defender was defeated, become hidden. And then Sniper, while attacking, if a target space is 5 or more spaces away, you may reroll one attack die. Uh, the, um, the Elite Ones have everything that these guys have, only better. So it looks like they have plus 1 accuracy with PS1 built in. Uh, they have a surge for PS1 still, a surge for plus 3 accuracy, and a surge for plus 2 damage. So, that's all good. They keep the Gorilla. It looks like they have Elite Sniper, which lets them reroll both of the dice. Oh, sorry, up to two dice, because obviously we could be focused as well. There's a, a tip for you all. At 12 points, and they also have 7 health. So, for... for one more point per figure, you're gaining the ability to reroll what I believe is two attack die and two extra health with a better built in attack because you get PS1 all the time. So I'm pretty excited to try some 12 point Alliance Rangers. What's the next one on the list? Is Captain Terror. So this guy um, looks like 7 points, 13 health, speed of 5. It's good to see uh, a trooper base guy who has um, a speed of 5. It can help those lists work. Blue, green, yellow for the attack. And he has surge for um, extra damage and surge for pierce, I think. I'll just have to open it up again. Yeah, Surge for plus 2 damage and Surge for PS2. It also appears to have a flamethrower, which what I can make out is uh, choose a space within two spaces. Each of a figure um, on or adjacent to that space is dealt, suffers 1 damage and I think it's 1 strain, then becomes weakened. And he also has mounted, so at the start of your activation, gain three movement points. So, automatically generates three movement points and has speed of five. This guy's quick. What you will notice is that they have 
um, Dubak riders in uh, as well who roll the same attack um, and they have a surge for P uh, 1 damage and a surge for PS2 and I'm not sure what this first part of it is because it's covered up so it looks like there's a potential to need to buy three of these packs to field two riders and tarot and then have you yourself a bit of a cavalry charge which happens to be the name of his card from what I can make out on that um, use at the start of your activation until the end of a range you gain plus one block uh, and while it's friendly troop and something friendly troopers within two spaces of you are attack oh and while friendly troopers within two spaces of you are attacking they apply plus one surge to our attack results so you can get a bit of a beefy cavalry charge off it looks like there um oh yeah the jackpack troopers um while defending you may convert one block to a surge cancel and jets after you resolve an attack if a target space is within two spaces gain one movement point um four points it's a nice cheap activation for imperials um they're still troopers they're uh, mobile which is really good okay I don't want to oversell them, it depends what the elites get as well, obviously. Um, I think they're missing the trooper reroll, but they should have an interesting playstyle being able to dart around corners, getting that extra movement point here and there. So you can afford to go that extra space forwards because you're going to get a movement back after your attack anyway. Um, That one, did that one. Oh yeah, finally. We get to look at Jabba. So I made a massive page of notes. Full page, full page of notes for this one. Okay, I did write big. Uh, so Jabba is six points. I'm just going to switch over to him. Yeah. So it's six points, has ten health, two speed, a black defense die, a red green attack. He is a leader, smuggler, hunter. He has a bully trait, a smuggler, no, oh, sorry, I've said for traits, so leader, smuggler, hunter. Then he has the ability bully which is a figure of your choice within three spaces suffers three strain so with him only having a speed of two it's, it's gonna be easily isolated from the rest of your force so I just dissuade some of the people coming over to him by the time we've got there they should have command cards in the hand and just be able to throw that automatic strain onto them Especially when you look at some of the other synergies that Scum have with Strain. It should do a decent amount of damage and just convince people to stay away. Um, it has Incentivize, I believe it is. A Scum figure of your choice becomes focused. And there isn't a range restriction on that. Um, so that's really good. Uh, schemes is draw one command card. Then... Um, I believe the next one is a double action which I think reads order hit again it's a bold text I can't really make out but order hit sounds right so spend two victory points a scum figure of your choice may interrupt to perform an attack um, it then gains two movement points so if you think about the Imperial Officer's orders and things like that, it works in the same way. Again, there is no um, range restriction on this, which is good because Jabba's so slow. Um, 
what you get to do is obviously you spend in victory points which can affect the flow of the game but it brings in the option to take first strike now give yourself a four victory points to trigger this ability earlier on and then if you've got somebody like Bubba Fett or um, even HKs something like that it can really pump out the damage you get to spend those points and just push it through it also has uh, nefarious schemes which is when a hostile figure is defeated you gain one victory point so I can really see first strike coming in with Jabba here um, in a good combination because it gives you those points to get Jabba's ability in the game straight away turn one you can focus some people um, draw an extra command card stuff like that and in the second round you can order your hit and just start pushing through that extra damage um, his command card was the only other thing I had a proper look at and that is blood feud so it's another action uh, two point card Jabba Hut only obviously um, play this card on a hostile deployment card when an attack targeting a figure uh, to that group uh, is yeah when an attack targeting a figure in that group is declared apply plus one damage to the attack's result so again it's another buff and it works on your entire list once you've played it so you throw it onto like I don't know, a snow trooper card because there's three of them you want them to be quite resilient and every time you're attacking those troopers you'll keep uh, getting that plus one damage or you throw it onto um, like a Luke or something like that and it'll just help you chip away at that one card um, I think I don't know what Jabba's enough to push out the Rebel Kerr package. I still feel like you can take Jabba and Gideon. With Jabba, I don't know that you necessarily need 3PO. In fact, you could quite easily spend those points on something better now. Um, oh, what would I put in instead? I don't know. Maybe uh, a Davith or something like that. Something just annoying and fast. Something with speed 5, definitely. Um, and just keep going that way. You know, probably won't put a uh, hand solo in it. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, having a way to focus anyone on the battlefield is really, really strong. Um... I feel like he's got a decent attack but no surge abilities whatsoever so he's very much a control piece um, it's gonna be it's gonna see play I guarantee that it's really good um, whether you need the first strike or not I'm not sure but with all of the other ways that scum have to score extra vic victory points now I feel like Jabba just pushes that over the edge. You think about, uh, like personally I've been playing lists that have uh, on a diplomatic mission in them and getting that extra one point around. If you're getting an extra one point for every figure you kill, trooper lists are suddenly um, a liability to say the least. If you spam four units of regular stormtroopers, Bubba Fett can earn you uh, an extra point every turn Jabba can be ordering Bubba to shoot again. Uh, off. <laughs> Imagine IG doing his uh, massive attack, reactivating, and Jabba ordering him to attack as well. again. That's potentially five points your IG's earned in a turn. Uh, not to mention anything else in your list. There's loads of fun things that Jabba's going to open up. So, yeah, I'm really, really pleased to see him. Um, A Rancor as well, it's really exciting. Uh, the Gamorrean Guards will be fun. Uh, between the Gamorreans, Wing Guard, Jabba, 
the rancor i feel like there's going to be some fun um alternate strain kind of lists out there so i'm looking forward to this immensely hope you guys are too um uh, thanks for watching everyone i'll try and do more content on imperial assault again i've got more stuff coming um i've been playing a little bit more imperial assault recently so that should be good i'll do some rundowns of the list i've been playing and try and get some battle reports and things but yeah thanks for watching everyone um make sure you subscribe to the channel if you uh, liked it and leave any comments let me know what your thoughts are thank you